beautiful individual and yes it is a snake and a massive snake at that we're looking at three meters plus probably closer to four if not clearing four easily it's wound up a little bit in the grass and with these hot summer days like this this is the time when we start to see these animals exposing themselves a little bit more so this is a African rock python and it's most likely a female because of the size but uh, these snakes as you can see now the entirety of it they don't have fangs they've literally just got quite spiky teeth that can they're quite razor sharp but they're very much bent backwards towards the throat so what happens is they're a constrictor so if they identify prey they will latch onto it and with those teeth it really helps uh, that the prey can't get away then they wrap themselves around it and they slowly squeeze now they don't crush the animal as the animal breathes out the snake tightens it breathes out again it tightens and so there in that way it is not able to breathe in and the more it breathes out the more it gets constricted and so eventually there is a suffocating mechanism that goes on but not a crushing so it will be suffocated um, once it's been wound around and the time taken that all the air is exhaled uh, then no inhaling is able to take place then the really difficult part of um, unhitch unhinging the jaw um, it takes place around the mouth area and then it, it starts the process of trying to ingest whatever it has been able to kill and with those teeth it slowly pulls forward and bites down again and slowly starts to swallow now these pythons can take down and eat um, even up to small antelope um, and I once saw a dead water buck on the road. It was a youngster, um, uh, we'll give it that, but it was still a very big animal nonetheless. And a python had swallowed it all the way to the, uh, to the shoulder of this water buck and something must have disturbed it and so it actually spat it out. But it just goes to show that pythons like this will be able to kill um, even antelope a water buck, zebra, baby zebra, and they will be able to ingest it as well. The only thing is, is at that time when they start to ingest that animal, they are very vulnerable and so they very easily spit it out and make for cover because at that time they could be attacked by jackals, hyenas, lions, even other snakes. So they need to be quite calm and in a space where they're not going to be seen for them to be able to actually get the animal down uh, into the uh, body. Once that has happened then, then they need to just get into a place where they can actually digest it. Now that can take up to a week, so they need to be in a good place. So actually feeding for pythons is quite a dangerous affair and it's a, a very long-winded affair as well. Um, and if they had to, like that one, um, swallow a whole baby water buck, that could literally last it for up till a year if that uh, snake had to stay very um, inactive. So they are actually amazing creatures. And this one out here now basking in the sun, obviously getting its energy from the warmth that is coming through from the sun itself. They are ectothermic, not cold-blooded as we've always said that they are because they do warm their blood up. Um, they just need their metabolism assisted by external heat. So they do warm themselves up and once they have then they are full of beans and they move on. Now you know that snakes do not have ears so you can speak as loud as you like. You can even shout at snakes, they won't hear you. So now I don't think we're going to go anywhere. Let's see what happens with the snake. But while